All right, here we are. Um, so we've seen chlorophyll, um, this really important molecule that allows the sunlight um, on the edge of the sun to actually enter ecosystems. But now we want to look at how that energy is first converted or what's it converted to, and then finally, um, then how it's stored in plants and therefore able to move through the ecosystem and provide energy for each trophic level above. So um, what I have here is um, two test tube racks. Uh, I've labelled the test tube racks, um, each of the test tubes in with different letters. Fortunately, everything I have here starts with a different letter. Um, we have, first of all, pure starch solution. So I'm going to do a number of tests um, on this starch solution just to see what the positive test for starch is. So in the table in your OneNote, you will write down when I test starch, you'll write it in your table and then you'll write the positive test for it. Um, and then we have pure glucose. So we'll see um, what the positive test for gluco glucose is. And then we're going to test different parts of a plant to see whether starch or glucose or perhaps both are present in that part of the plant. Um, or, you know, if our tests don't work, maybe we'll see that nothing is present, but, you know, that might lead to further investigation. Um, so what we have, the different parts of the plant, like I mentioned earlier, um, we've got our fruit. So I've just got apple to represent our fruit. I've mashed it up a bit in a mortar and pestle. Um, so we've got a bit of juice in there. And um, then I have a leaf that, for, so the leaf that I took, I um, cut it up and I just mashed it up. Um, I'll pulverize it if you like in a mortar and pestle again into just a kind of um, juice there. Uh, we then have, um, oh, actually, I thought that was apple. That was that initial one was potato. And then here we have uh, the apple, the fruit. So the potato is going to represent our roots um, and storage parts of the plant. And then we have the apple, which represents the fruit. And then finally, I've taken um, on my little adventure through um, through the school grounds, I found some grevillea. Um, they're all in bloom at the moment, which is quite spectacular. Um, and I've taken one of the grevillea flowers. I've then uh, chucked it into the um, modern pestle and pulverized that as well. So what I'm going to do, I've got them labeled F for flower. So I'll put some of my um, flower juice and the way I made the juice I just add a little bit of water and then pulverized it okay then I've got a, a second test tube labeled A for apple so I'll put those into two my two apple test tubes careful not to mix them um, then this was gonna be a bit tricky but the leaf um, I've had to had to I don't know, it's green, so I guess that's the, the issue here. So will we be able to see our positive tests um, with that real green colour of the leaf? And that's obviously from the chlorophyll, which we just previously saw. Um, now, then we have our potato, and I've labelled that um, test tube P. Okay, so I've once again put some water in, um, and then just, you know, mashed up the um, potato with my mortar and pestle. So two test tubes with potato. Um, then I've got my glucose, so my pure glucose solution. That's important because we need to really see what a positive test for glucose is. Okay, um, Okay. so I'm just going to add a little bit of glucose to there. I've labeled that test tube G. Conver conveniently, all of these things started with um, different letters, which really helped. Okay, so here's my glucose over here as well. And I'm going to tell you why I'm, uh, I've got two sets of test tubes here. Okay, so... And finally, my S tube S test tube S uh, is starch, so pure starch solution, okay, um, which is really just flour if you like, mixed in like cooking flour mixed in water. That would be a simple starch solution, okay. So um, I've got my two um, test tube racks. I'm going to use these samples um, to test for glucose, and I'm going to use these samples to test for starch okay so i think it makes sense to start off with testing for glucose first and the reason why is because we go the chlorophyll is used um, in the process of photosynthesis to convert co2 and water into uh, glucose so 
the first thing is created in photosynthesis or in the ecosystem that energy is first turned into glucose. So let's just see um, what the positive test for glucose is. Um, so it's a pretty um, fancy solution. Um, in your lab notes, um, I have in what the mixture is, but you can actually buy a Benedict solution um, pre-made. Saved me a little bit of time, so I've just um, used the pre-made pre-made stuff rather than um, rather than making it myself. Saying that, the, one of the main components of it is um, is copper sulfate, and you can tell that it's got copper in there, copper ions, because it's blue. Okay, so that there is the um, Benedict solution when there's no nothing else in there. There's no glucose. I mean, no glucose um, present. So therefore. I'm just going to put that aside just so we can compare it um, later on. So let's just put this um, here, and I'll put it kind of, I don't know, down somewhere in the middle. Okay, then um, to each one of these test tubes, so just so you guys can see a little bit closer. So we've got um, F for flower, we've got our apple test tube, we've got our L for, um, oh, what was L for? Oh, for the leaf, obviously. Um, P for potato, G for glucose, and S for starch. Okay, so let's just um, add uh, our Benedict's solution to each one of these. Okay, now I should say, uh, I've just got a little image over here. Um, glucose acts as what's known as a reducing agent. So um, if the copper that, which is in its ionic form um, in the Benedict solution is reduced, it will turn start turning into actual pure copper metal and then we'll start seeing um, a really orange colour. So with high concentrations of glucose, we see a really sort of kind of brick type brown colour form. Um, and then when there's no glucose, it just stays that same blue colour um, like we see here. So that's um, meant to be representing that blue all the way down here saying zero. You'll have that image in your notes as well. Um, so let's give it a shot and see what um, parts of the plant has have glucose and what don't. That's if our um, actual reaction works. Now, for um, Benedict's solution to work properly, it needs to be warmed up. So I'm going to add and then put them into our water bath over here. Hopefully uh, my little pencil labels don't don't rub off. That would be frustrating. Okay. So there they are. I'll just show you a little bit closer. All right, so here we have all the solutions. You can definitely see there's a change going on in a lot of them. So um, I'm just going to give them a little bit of a mix around. All right, so let's um, start taking them out because I think we've um, we've definitely been warmed up um, and we've got some varying degrees of um, reactivity there. Okay, so we'll start off with our flower. All right, so let's put the flower first. Now that I want you to compare that to your table and is that an indication of the presence of glucose? Now there's what the Benedict's looks like uh, before it's uh, when there's no glucose, okay, and that's what it looks like on there. Well, I'll let you make up your decision, okay. Then next one along, um, we'll go for, okay. Well, got the potato. I'll try and keep it in the same order. Um, so here, well, the same order as what I had before. So the potato, pea, um, and yes, we absolutely it turned green. So it's definitely some glucose, not 
massively high concentrations, but definitely some. So compare that to your table and see what see what you've got. Um, okay, here we have okay glucose. So um, glucose, I had second last. Okay, now that is you know the quintessential test. It is in incredibly red. Okay, so therefore we've got high concentrations. That obviously means we've got lots of glucose in a glucose solution, uh, makes sense. Okay, now on our second one, here we have apple, so the fruit. Do we have a lot of glucose in fruit? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that as well. Um, here we have our starch solution. Okay, now pure starch, there's no, um, really, no change, okay? So we don't really have any glucose um, present in starch, that makes sense, it's a pure starch solution. Um, now, then we have our leaf, um, and without a doubt, um, there is a change there in the leaf. It's gone green as well, so there's glucose in the leaf. Okay, so really they all have different concentrations. I'll let you look at your table and write down in the table um, which ones have the highest concentrations and which ones have the lowest. Now, um, we're then going to look at tests for um, starch. So, we know that Glucose is the first thing to be formed. So then, but glucose seeps out of cells. It can't, it's, a, it's aqueous, it dissolves really easily in water, so it can't be stored in plants very effectively. So instead, um, it convert glucose, before it sort of travels its way up, um, the energy travels its way up through the ecosystem, it's first converted to starch, and that's often the way a lot of herbivores will consume it. Um, so how do we test for starch? Well, the simple um, positive test for starch is um, using what's known as iodine, okay? So um, over here, I've got an iodine solution. Okay, so here's my iodine solution, okay? And I'm gonna put it first into starch, let's have a look. Okay, now, see the color of it um, there, it's um, brown, and now just look at this. It's gone this incredibly black color. So blackness, um, when a solution turns black, that is like, I, you can barely see through it anymore. That is indicative of high concentrations of starch. So if I add it to the glucose solution, okay, now you can see that it's gone the color of iodine, brown, but definitely not turning black. Okay, so um, there's no indication that there's any starch in our glucose solution. That makes sense, okay? Now, what about in our um, potato? So, let's just get a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah, and then, it's not looking initially, but let, hang on, let me just... All right, so, what would you say about the potato? That there is looking, starting to look very similar to the um, pure starch. Okay, so lots of starch. So um, the glucose that's been from um, photosynthesis has been converted to this more stable um, form called starch. Okay, now what about in the leaf? So, okay, so here we go. Now, it's, it's hard to say, but Without a doubt, there is definitely the presence of starch in there. It's definitely, it's not nowhere near, nowhere near as high as um, the potato or the pure starch, obviously. Um, the potato is, it's, all the glucose is being transferred into um, starch and stored as the tuber underneath the ground. That's why um, plants are storing a lot of, a lot of energy and then I'll transport it later, okay? Then we have our apple. So um, I would expect apples to have you know, a fair bit of starch. But let's actually see. Because we found that they had a lot of um, glucose. That's pretty obvious. Um, but interestingly, it's what would you say? I mean, personally, it has definitely taken on a slight, um, slight darker, slightly darker color, but definitely not high in starch. So, and that kind of makes sense. They're very high in, uh, well, you know, like it, is, it has starch, but not, not as high as the, the potato. Okay, and then finally, we have our flower, um, you know, so let's just do our final. So we saw the flower had a fair bit of um, glucose. Okay, and mildly darker, but not really. Okay, so let's just put all our results together and compare them. Okay, so I've put them in the same order here. 
Okay, so, and this is where I want you guys to discuss in your notes. I want you to discuss why these would be, why this would be the case. Okay, so, um, flowers don't have much starch, but they do have a lot of glucose. Why would a flower have a lot of glucose? What are they trying to do by being a flower? What, particularly something like a grevillea, quite fragrant, um, a lot of birds attracted to it. Why does it have a lot of glucose? Um, here we have apple. Okay, now why would apple have not necessarily that much starch, but has a lot of this sweet glucose and sugar? Why would an apple want to have, or fruit, want to have a lot of glucose? Um, then we have our leaf. Now, our leaf has um, a fair bit of starch, but it does have some glucose as well, as you'll see from the greenish color there. Um, and so it's got a little bit of both. What is going on there? What actually process is happening in leaves? Uh, then we have the potato, very high in starch, like black. So why is a potato um, got a lot of starch? You can look that up if you can't um, look it up on the internet. If you can't think of the reason for yourself, okay? And then here we have glucose, obviously deposit no starch in pure glucose. And these, are, and over here we have um, a really quintessential positive test with Benedict's for our glucose. And then for um, sugar. I mean, for starch, we have pure starch solution. We've got really black solution there and no, no, when we use Benedict solution, no solution there. Uh, so anyway, I want you to look at um, all those processes and there's a whole bunch of questions I want you to answer um, about the movement of energy from the sun into, um, into ecosystems, but then how plants actually store that energy. Okay, so anyway, off to you.